Hi, I'm Orlando Marthos, and what I'm going to be showing you today is what exactly depth of field is, and more importantly, an equation that you can use so that you can calculate your depth of field for DSLR or video camcorders. Now you may be wondering just what the heck depth of field is. DigitalCameraWorld.com describes it as this. A camera can only focus its lens to a single point, but there will be an area that stretches in front of and behind this focus point that appears sharp. This zone, this area, is what is known as depth of field. It is not a fixed distance, it changes in size and can be described as either shallow, where only a narrow zone appears sharp, or deep, where more of the picture appears sharp. Now, in order to successfully calculate your depth of field range, you need to understand the equations behind calculating depth of field. For instance, you need to be able to calculate your hyperfocal distance. Hyperfocal distance is when you can set your lens focal distance to its maximum distance to create the largest or deepest depth of field. The point in which that occurs is called the hyperfocal distance. Now to calculate hyperfocal distance, the equation is H equals F squared over NC plus F, where H is your hyperfocal distance in millimeters, F is the lens focal length in millimeters, N is the f-stop or f-number. The f-number corresponds to how open or closed the lens iris or aperture is. Now this is often represented in stops or f-stops such as f2.8, uh, f5.6, f8, f11, and so on. C is a circle of confusion in millimeters. Now, the circle of confusion is an optical spot caused by a cone of light rays from a lens not coming to a perfect focus when imaging a point source. To be able to calculate your near distance of acceptable sharpness, your equation would be dn equals s times h minus f over h plus s minus 2f. And to be able to calculate your far distance of acceptable sharpness, your equation would be df equals s times h minus f over h minus s. s is the focus distance, or the distance that you are focusing your subject to. Once we are able to calculate our near and far distances of acceptable sharpness, this will then allow us to calculate our depth of field by subtracting the two. We'll know exactly how far in millimeters a subject can stray either forward or backwards from the camera and still remain in acceptable focus. All right, now that we know our equations, we can start plugging in variables. For our lens focal length, we're going to go with a really wide angle lens, like an 18 millimeter. We're going to set our aperture or F number to an F4. I'm going to be making my calculations of depth of field based off of a Canon 5D Mark II camera. Now, the circle of confusion for that is a 0.03 millimeter circle. Now that we have all of our variables plugged in, all we have to do is solve for h, which gives us h equals 2,718 millimeters, or 8.92 feet. Now that we know our hyperfocal distance, we can plug this back into our other equations and calculate our near distance of acceptable sharpness. For this equation, we need to know the distance of our subject. Say we're taking a photo of a person, and we're going to set that person, for example, 10 feet away from our camera, or 3,048 millimeters. It's important that we work this equation in all millimeters and then convert to feet afterwards so that we don't mix up any of our calculations. So plugging in 3,048 millimeters to our focal distance, 2,718 millimeters to our hyperfocal distance, and then again our focal length is going to be 18 millimeters. Now if we plug all of that into our calculator, we'll get 1,436.23 millimeters, or 4.71 feet. Now we won't have to calculate our far limit of acceptable focus because we already know that our hyperfocal distance is 8.92 feet and our subject is standing 10 feet away from the camera. So that means that the subject is standing 
past that hyperfocal distance, meaning that they are already in that infinite depth of field. Meaning that our subject should remain in focus as long as they don't walk beyond our near limit of 4.71 feet. Now, keeping in mind that wider or smaller millimeter focal length lenses tend to have a much deeper depth of field, longer lenses or a higher millimeter focal length number will have a much smaller or shallower depth of field. For example, instead of using an 18 millimeter wide lens, we could be switching to a 50 millimeter lens. We can keep our subject at 10 feet and our f-stop at four by plugging in 50 millimeter into our master equation of the hyperfocal distance, we now will end up with a hyperfocal distance of 68 feet. Now that we've solved for our hyperfocal distance, we can plug that into our other two equations to calculate our near and our far limit of acceptable focus. After we do that, we'll end up with our near focus being 8.74 feet our far focus limit being 11.7 feet, which means by subtracting the two, we'll have a total depth of field of 2.94 feet. So what does this all mean? Well, it means that if our focus on our lens is set to 10 feet and our subject starts standing at 10 feet, they can move either a foot and a half in front of them or a foot and a half behind them and still remain within acceptable focus because we have a total of 2.94 feet depth of field. If our subject were to move beyond the limits of that three foot depth of field, we would then have to change our focal distance to match it. The basics come down to this. Having a shallower depth of field will allow more of the background image to be out of focus and blurry, drawing the eye towards your subject and a deeper depth of field will mean that more of the background will be in focus and take some of the eye off of the subject. Now you wouldn't be expected to calculate all of this stuff while on the location on the shoot. And instead, what you would do is use a depth of field calculator, which there are plenty of phone apps that can do that for you. But this video is just to really show you and help you to understand what is being calculated in those programs. Well, I hope this all made sense. Again, I'm Orlando Martos. I'll see you next time.